Hello, my name is Bharat Reddy. I'm a product manager in the Exologic Group. Uh, I've been with the product since inception and I've been with Oracle for the past 10 years. And uh, today I would like to talk to you about Exologic Patching. So I would like to cover what Exologic Patching is all about, the various components that are involved in patching the system, how, how we patch it, uh, what are the best practices, uh, and you know, we can cover, uh, I'll cover uh, you know, the frequency in which we ship patches, uh, how we ship patches, where they're coming from, uh, you know, what to apply, what not to apply, and you know, we'll cover that in best practices. So with that, let's jump into the patching session. So this diagram, you probably, uh, over many sessions, you have seen the Exologic architecture diagram. What this represents is an Exologic, so if you look at the bottom layer, it's the Exologic Elastic Cloud hardware. That's the compute, the ZFS, uh, the switches, so on and so forth. And then you have Exabus, which is our InfiniBand backplane, the Oracle VM3, or bare metal Linux. You can do the OS, one or the other. Then you have the various upper, uh, upper tier applications, like WebLogic, Coherence, Tuxedo, Traffic Director, and Exologic Control. Exologic Control is only uh, applicable for uh, the virtual stack. So this picture represents what, what, what the various components in Exologic. What the red means is uh, Oracle has done enhancements uh, in, in, uh, has done put in a lot of R&D and done enhancements to those components to make them, uh, you know, Exologic to work on Exologic. Let's look at some of the uh, terminology and uh, for patches and upgrades. So we get asked this question all the time: What? Wh how do you differentiate an upgrade from a patch? So typically, an upgrade is re uh, replacing a product with a newer version of the same and bringing it up to date. Uh, updates are performed ac across all Exologic components. So this is, we do an upgrade when we go from one major version to another ver major version number. Like for example, uh, from 20400 to 20600 is an upgrade. Patches, so what is a patch? So typically, uh, this, is the, uh, this, is, this is the Wikipedia definition of a patch. Uh, typically refers to a piece of software designed to correct a problem in a software program. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, only uh, some, uh, w when we ship patches, the n not all the components are updated in Exologic. Uh, it's only a few components, like a monthly PSU or quarterly PSU. Uh, then you know the the version number changes are minor, like PSUs, one-off patches. Th those are patches. So let's look at an overview of uh, Exologic patching. So what what this slide talks about is the release cycle for the PSU. PSU, by the way, is patch set updates, uh, and these are available through my Oracle support. There's a, uh, there's a patch set update master note. Um, you should memorize this uh, number. It is 1314535.1. So this uh, master note has all the details of all the PSUs. So it's a really good uh, note to keep, uh, to mark as your favorites. The release cycle for the Exologic PSUs is every quarter. So we do it January, April, July, October. And it's uh, the patch set ships on the Tuesday closest to the 15th of the month. Uh, and it contains both Exologic infrastructure as well as middleware, uh, sometimes uh, or both. So uh, <coughs> we, what we do is we announce these patch dates a year in advance. So for a customer, that, that means uh, you, can plan, uh, uh, you can plan your patches ahead, ahead of time. And we ship a single patch. We, sing we ship a single uh, patch bundle that, that has the infrastructure as well as the middleware. Uh, what, how is this valuable to you? So today, if you look at the uh, existing paradigm, uh, you have to get, if you're having Dell servers and VMware, um, you know, running VMware on Dell, and then you have Cisco switches, you have to get patches from all these different vendors, and they don't ship them at the same time. So with Exologic, we ship a one patch bundle. It's announced one year in advance. We, we provide you the ex exact dates on which the patch bundle is going to ship, and then you can plan for that. So uh, that's, that's the value prop of uh, the Exologic uh, patching. Uh, the, uh, some of the other recommendations I have are from a PSU standpoint, you always apply the infrastructure patches more frequently. Uh, be no more than six months behind uh, on the PSUs. Uh, middleware patches or WebLogic patches, it's customer dependent. So if a customer wants to apply those patches, they're more than welcome to, but that involves a longer test cycle. So that's kind of a high level overview of patching and upgrades. Um, here, again, uh, you know, we support both rolling and non-rolling patches for or non-rolling upgrades and patching for all components. Uh, a rolling upgrade, what we mean by that, or rolling patch, is basically when we have do one node at a time. Uh, for compute nodes, it's node by node. Uh, for off-node components, by off-node components, I mean the NM2 gateway switches, the ZFS, um, 
Yeah, so those are the, uh, and, and, it's, and the spine switch, the NM236P switch. So those are the off-node components. So you can also patch one, of the, uh, one component at a time uh, using rolling upgrades. So, uh, how, so we've talked about an overview of the patching, how, when we ship patches, but how do you apply these patches? Uh, we use Exapatch. Exapatch is an automated tool, is an a CLI uh, tool that automates all patches and upgrades. So it basically simplifies a complex patching uh, paradigm that Exalogic brings into play. Uh, by the way, this is the only way you can, uh, you can apply patches on Exalogic. This is the only supported way. Uh, it's used to apply PSUs, upgrade bundles, and in the future we'll look at, we are looking at uh, doing one-off patches. So I hope that that's given you an uh, overview of uh, uh, Exalogic, uh, Exalogic patching and upgrades. So here are some uh, uh, best practice recommendations. Uh, always use Exapatch to patch the machine. Uh, always apply patches on a test system first. Uh, so this, this does two things. It allows uh, for the patch to uh, be validated for your environment, and it also allows, uh, provides baking time for the apps. So, uh, you know, so this gives you an ample bake time to avoid issues when you go uh, apply it in production. The other important thing which people miss are process and, uh, you know, which customers miss are pa process and people. So, you know, they don't have well-defined escalation procedures. Uh, sometimes the staff is not trained. You know, make sure that uh, you, you define well-defined, uh, you, you, you have well-defined escalation procedures and uh, ensure your staff is trained and al also define your patching frequency. So, for example, uh, you know, we ship four, four patch bundles. Like, you know, if a customer wants, they can apply all four patch bundles or they can pick two and apply those two. All our patches are cumulative. So, uh, always, the, the biggest thing people don't do is, or customers don't do is, they don't have a rollback plan. What happens if the patch fails? How do, what, what do I do? I don't want my system to be down, so I need a rollback plan. So, ensure that you create a well-defined rollback plan. Uh, you always test the rollback plan and, you know, make sure that the uh, backups you take are valid. So, and the, as we go through, uh, Exa patch is going to be integrated with Exa backup and recovery, Exa BR. So we'll automatically do that for you. But until then, uh, this is this is strongly recommended. An Exa logic machine. So if you look at an if you look at this diagram, this is uh, one of my favorite slides. Uh, it basically provides uh, you know an overview of all the components that make up an Exa logic machine. You have sun, you have the IB switches, you have the Cisco switch, you have the Sun storage appliance, you have the PDUs, you have the spine switch. Then you have the compute nodes and the various subcomponents within that compute node. And by the way, all of these need to be patched at some point or another. So now if you actually look at each of the components, each of the components have their own patching mechanism. So now would you really want to go and patch uh, the Sun switch one, uh, the, the IB switch one way, the Cisco switch one way? So you know, it's, it's just a mess. So what we did was we took this complex environment, we took this complex problem for, in the, for this complex environment and we created what we called Exapatch. Uh, Exapatch is our Exalogic patching CLI utility. We'll talk about that. Uh, you, you know, we'll talk about that more in the coming slides. But this slide, uh, you know, basically talks about the various uh, uh, patchable components of that are a part of Exalogic. So let's look at uh, the next slide here, which talks about the various patchable components and the frequency in which uh, they are uh, they are shipped to customers and uh, whether they can be applied rolling or non-rolling. So. We have the InfiniBand switches, both the NM2 gateway switch and the uh, NM236P switch. Uh, so the component that needs to be patched is a switch firmware. Uh, we try and ship that twice a year or less. But uh, as we are going through evolving in Exalogic, we're, you know, we've come to a point where uh, you know, right now we're shipping more than twice a year. Uh, and the reason we want to ship this twice a year or less is because it involves a reboot. So we do not want to bring your system down to apply a firmware patch. So I mean, the na very nature of firmware is you have to reboot it. So we, we, we kind of want to reduce the frequency. And this can be applied rolling, and Exapatch take care, takes care of that for you. Uh, ZFS storage appliance, this actually has three components, right? So you have the ZFS ILOM, you have the software, and then you have the workflows. So again, we try and ship uh, the uh, you know, ZFS software uh, twice a year or less, uh, but you know, uh, this will become more evident as we go forward in this coming year. Uh, again, you can do this rolling. Uh, uh, one thing to keep in mind is, uh, you know, the ZFS ILOM uh, needs to be patched before the ZFS uh, heads need to be patched, but Exapatch already takes care of that. So, now if you look at the compute node, it's got the IB card firmware, the RAID controller firmware, uh, the OS, uh, so it can be OVS or OEL or Solaris, 
uh, then you have, uh, you know, for the firmware, uh, what we do is we try and uh, ship, for the firmware and the kernel, I think. Well, actually, firmware and kernel, we ship twice a year. Uh, security patches are uh, op on, on a per need basis. So in if, we s if we hit a zero day bug, we'll ship a patch, a security patch. Uh, then the others, there's a bunch of other software in there, tooling and everything else, it's quarterly. So uh, again, the firmware and kernel, we want to ship less than twice a year. And as we go forward, you'll see that uh, this is the case. Uh, rolling, uh, again, over here you have rolling, uh, we support rolling and non-rolling. So you can, it depends upon whether you want to take down time to do this. So all our, all our, patch, all our patchable components can be patched rolling. Uh, here are uh, the Exologic control stack. So you have the ex uh, Oracle, uh, you know, as a part of this, you have the Oracle database, EM Ops Center, uh, which has uh, the enterprise controller, proxy, two proxy controllers, the Oracle VM manager, so again, over here, uh, you get quarterly patches for most of these components. But uh, as post 206, one thing is you'll see less and less patches coming from for the Exologic control stack. Uh, this is simply because we're moving towards a newer architecture uh, based, on, um, you know, uh, based on newer technology. So again, you can uh, patch the control stack rolling. Now guest VMs, uh, all you're patching is the OS. Uh, so again, for the kernel, again, it's two, uh, twice a year or less. Security patches are on demand uh, and are on, uh, per, are, are on a per need basis, uh, and the others are quarterly. And again, you can do rolling patching or non-rolling patching. So these are the patchable components. Uh, this this kind of gives you an overview of the various patchable components in Exologic. So now let's look at, uh, so this is basically what I talked about you know, in my slides uh, earlier. I just uh, covered that. So. I'm going to skip that. And then you have uh, the guest. Uh, the here are some pointers for the control and guest v service. So note that the control, uh, the guest v service patching is optional, as in you can run an um, older version of a guest VM on a newer version of the software. So we, we are backward compatible by one release. So if you're at 206, you can run 204 uh, VMs in your environment on the 206 uh, infrastructure layer. But uh, your guest VMs cannot take, uh, cannot leverage any of the new functionality or the bug fixes or un, uh, enhancements. Uh, you know that's pretty obvious if if you don't upgrade it. You can parallelly patch all the compute nodes at this. Uh, oh sorry, you can parallelly patch all the VMs on a given node. Just use DC. Uh, you use exapatch to do that. Uh, one thing is you need to use distribution groups to ensure that uh, the application and V servers are available. So that way the uh, v, uh, you know your application is uh, you, if you bring down one VM. One, one part of the v, uh, application, the other part of the application is still running. Uh, RPM updates in guest VMs, they're, if it's fully supported, customers can do this, uh, can, can go and update their RPMs uh, against ULN. Uh, you must use the exclusion list, it's documented in the uh, Exologic Machine Owner's Guide. Uh, one thing is if there's an OS patch involved, whether it be a guest V server or an Exologic Control uh, VM, you, we will have, we will have to reboot, so that re involves downtime. So these are some pointers around so let's look at Exapatch. It, it's our CLI tool. We'll provide you an overview of uh, uh, the CLI tool that automates patching for Exologic. So with that, so with Exapatch, as, as we talked about, uh, Exapatch is so, uh, you know, Exapatch actually automates all of the uh, uh, patching uh, and upgrades within Exologic. So it's used to apply the quarterly PSUs, the upgrade kits. Uh, you know, we are looking at supporting one-off patches in the future, but today it's only these uh, PSUs and upgrade kits. Uh, it covers all the infrastructure components. It, uh, you can patch every single component on the fabric from compute node to, uh, to ILOM to spine switch and every ZFS, uh, the, control, the control stack and everything else, uh, and, and the guest VMs. Uh, the, some of the, here are some of the features. It's, we sup, uh, Exapatch supports all uh, Exologic platforms. By that I mean it supports OVS, OE, uh, bare metal Linux, as well as Solaris. Uh, it has uh, so cool features like authentication, version checking. Uh, it updates, uh, you know, uh, version checking and uh, version updates, and then uh, it also supports rollbacks for some of the components. Uh, it automatically identifies the master slave uh, to orchestrate patching. Uh, it, uh, it you can do per component automation and parallel patching. Uh, so, why do we need version checking? Uh, version checking is required because you, if you are patching Exologic. Uh, the version, uh, the, the image of Exologic uh, contains, um, a, you know, various firmware levels for various products. So all of them together are, are a certified version. So now when you patch, you need to make sure that 
you are patching the right, you are, you are patching with the right versions. So that's where version checking comes into play. Uh, rollback, you know, a rollback is obvious. Authentication is how you authenticate to the various compute nodes uh, or the various resources within Exalogic uh, using Exapatch. A master slave identification is for the IB switches as well as for the NM2, uh, for sorry, the IB switches and the uh, ZFS appliance. So we typically patch the slaves first and then the master for both the IB switch as well as the uh, ZFS. So let's look at uh, this various security and authentication mechanisms that uh, Exapatch provides. So this is how Exapatch talks to the various uh, components within Exalogic. So we, we, you can enable passwordless SSH among all the components. So at this point, there's no password required. You've already set up the keys. Uh, you can, or you can say prompt rack password. Uh, when you, uh, what happens here is when you go through Exapatch, it'll prompt you uh, for it'll prompt you for the password for all the physical components. Once, uh, then you know the other other way to do. Uh, there's another uh, uh, methodology: prompt ECV, uh, ECV server password. What this means is it will prompt you for the control VM passwords. Or you can set up various groups. You could say all the compute nodes are one group. And you can say all my compute nodes have uh, one password. All my switches have one password. So this is where you use the prompt group passwords uh, uh, you know, to do this. Uh, prompt password, by default, it basically says, you know, I'm going to prompt you for every, see each and every component when I require it. And the default password uh, means it, it uses the uh, factory default value, which is welcome one. So, this, uh, this, takes, uh, this is an overview of Exapatch. So I have some references which are coming, uh, you know, which, are, which are very useful. So uh, you know, if you look at it, there's a bunch of MOS nodes. Uh, there is a, you know, there's a patching document uh, which talks about the YUM server installation, uh, the Exologic document library, of, of course. Thank you for watching uh, this presentation, uh, and thank you for your time. I hope I was able to provide you an overview of Exologic patching. Uh, an overview of all the components uh, that need to be patched, this, the frequency in which we ship patches, uh, you know, the best practices involved in patching, and uh, you know, what, what we're, so I hope this prepares you for your ne next patch cycle. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll, see you, uh, we'll see you in other presentations in the future.